Everybody, welcome a very, very special edition of the X's and Knowles program brought to you by Knowles 24-7. I usually do a very long intro, but I'm here with a busy man, and it's not Adam and it's not Kevin. No offense, guys. I am here with Florida State head football coach, Mr. Mike Norvell. Coach, how are you doing? Thank you so much for sitting down with us. Uh, doing really well, you know, and, uh, and uh, right in the middle of, uh, of our, our summer, uh, you know, recruiting period you know we still uh, spend a lot of great time with our players uh camps have uh, have been rolling well you know getting excited to get a lot of a lot of great players here on campus so uh, everything's going good you know seeing our team uh, the, the work they're putting in and uh, you know the, the positive strides that we're taking i mean definitely exciting to building up to uh to fall camp you know here in august and you know got a, got a lot of work we got to continue to do but guys are heading in the right direction and it's clearly an exciting time. Normally, you got the voice of an angel coach. You sound a little <laughs> bit hoarse, so I think there might have been some excitement brewing around the building. As always, go to Knowles 24-7 to check it out. Coach, we appreciate you sitting down with us. We are going to take a look at some of the film of your past. We got some stuff from Arizona State, some stuff from Pittsburgh, some stuff from Memphis, and then a special one we're going to just slip right under the radar and surprise you with. I think it'll be really fun. Um, one general question before we get to the film. Obviously, you had a very, I'd honestly say a meteoric rise in college football. You spent your playing career at Central Arkansas, go Bears, under a head coach, Clint Conk, Gulf South Champions 2005, obviously. Uh, you were a GA there for one year, and then I think a GA at Tulsa for one year before you became the wide receivers coach under Todd Graham. It's obviously a very quick rise. The offense that you have, what, what was the genesis of it? Was this something before you came into coaching you kind of had an idea of how you wanted to run an offense were there some guys that played an influence like the ocs you were colleagues with guys like gus malzahn herb hand calvin mcgee who who were the specific kind of like the genesis of the offense that you run and then the guys that were influences on it you know i mean uh, it's it's a great question and really there's been so many people that i've been able to meet and get to know throughout this journey and uh, try to take a little bit of all. I mean, there's things that we do that back from my playing days, uh, you know, we, we threw the ball around, you know, pretty good uh, when I was, when I was playing at central Arkansas. And then, you know, uh, really when I got a chance to be around Gus, you know, just implementing the tempo, how to, how to communicate different ways to do that, you know, um, you know, some unique alignments and, and variety of ways to get, get the ball to playmakers. Um, you, you mentioned guys like Herb Hand, you know, Calvin McGee, great with the kind of Rich Rodriguez, uh, you know, zone, some of the zone <laughs> schemes. Yeah. And, you know, you just take bits and pieces, uh, you know, of all those things. Um, and then, you know, I, but I'd still say I spent nine years with uh, with Todd Graham as, as uh, my head coach. And, you know, he was a defensive coordinator. He, he was a defensive mind that, uh, you know, I – I really got so much about learning, you know, defenses and, you know, what, what were they trying to take away? What were things that, that put conflict, you know, you know, against them. And then we just tried to build things that fit our personnel. And we've tried to be very multiple uh, in, in what we do. Um, and, and, you know, this is a program that's built for playmakers and, you know, we, we get playmakers and find a variety of ways to, to get the ball in their hands, to showcase their skills and talents, whether it's, you know, throwing it to them, you know, whether it's, you know, handing it to them, you know, them, you know, guys, you know, being able to line up in a variety of different places. And then when you look at the big guys up front, I mean, it's probably my favorite position to be able to play is, you know, because you guys a big man, you know, in this offense, you get, you got to pass protect, you got to run block, you got a variety of schemes that you get to, to showcase your, your talent in. And, um, you know, as that's continued to grow, I mean, you could see just, you know, what this offense can produce. So uh, you know, I've been, I've been blessed to be around a lot of great minds and, um, you know, just taking bits and pieces from all of them. Coach Atkins in the background listening on this interview, giving love to the big guys as a former wide receiver. I think that's very interesting. I, I like that, though. And, and obviously, Adam is loving it. He's blushing. You can tell from the hue on his face. <laughs> what, you've been calling plays in some capacity, I'd say, is the, either the co-OC or the OC of an offense since about 2011. Has there been anything either with play calling, game planning, something that has evolved for you over time, maybe something in 2011 that you thought was very important that changed? things like going from zone to more of a counter base set like were there any misconceptions or things that you thought were important in your career where that view has evolved as you've gone through your career well i mean i would say that you know 
football evolves and it, you know, there are things that, you know, when teams first went to the spread, you know, that the way that it attacked, uh, you know, defenses, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that um, you, you've seen kind of ebb and flow. You've seen, you know, four down fronts defensively, three down fronts, you know, when people started moving to, to Oki or, or more bare presentations, uh, you know, so we try to, you know, we try to adapt to uh, creating the competitive advantage and trying to create the one-on-ones uh, as much as possible, whether it's, you know, in the run game and, you know, creating angles, um, you know, trying to put our guys in the best, in the best matchups that we can, or if it's in a passing game, uh, you know, you know, and trying to, to do that for the receivers out on the perimeter. And, you know, we, we have a, uh, you know, a good amount of adjustments, you know, you got to be smart to play here. You've got to be, this is something that you got to value, uh, you know, the, the challenge of some of the things that we do schematically, and but it also prepares guys uh, not only to showcase, you know, you know, you know, all the physical skills, but it but also puts them in the best position to, to highlight, uh, you know, the, the playmakers that they are. And uh, so, I mean, it's been, there's, there's been a lot and we, we tie everything we do to the players that we have. And, you know, just why each year will look a little bit different than mm-hmm. as we continue to grow. I um, mean, it just allows so much uh, versatility in, in our, the way that we try to attack. And I'm glad you say that because even to the naked eye, a big, not a, a layman of, of the biggest layman in myself, you can see the evolution of just what you did in Memphis when you had, had guys like Kenny Gainwell and then Brady White, things you would shift different emphasis on. So you mentioned the offense built for playmakers. Fans love to name stuff, right? <laughs> Especially offenses, air raid offense, fun and gun, fast break, et cetera, et cetera. Yours is the offense built for playmakers. For you, no matter who is on the field, what do you? What is the emphasis of a Mike Norvell offense? Something that you're always going to emphasize, no matter what the personnel looks like, while you have a hand in shaping this offense. Well, we want to create the explosives, and you know, you do that. We want to be explosive in the run game. We are going to to do everything in our power to establish the run, uh, force the defense to have to. to, to bring people to the line of scrimmage, which opens up opportunities for the guys out on the perimeter. And, you know, whether it's, you know, it's, like I said, no matter, no matter what element uh, that, that it might take in the game, you know, we've had right. games where we've thrown for 400 yards. We've had games where we ran for 400 yards. Um, and it really is, we want to be able to take what the defense gives us. We want to be, uh, you know, multiple and balanced in how we can attack, but we want to be explosive. And, right. and we could do that with our tempo. We could do that, uh, you know, sometimes just with the, with the matchups. And, you know, you're not going to – this is not an offense where you're going to see uh, a guy line up in just one place or in just one spot. We are, we're going to move guys around. We're going to try to, you know, try to get our best guys on their less guys. And, I mean, that's a pretty simple way of doing that. But if, you, if you're able to create space and create opportunity, you know, I think that it's a, it, it's it's a lot of fun for the players, but it's also a lot of fun for the for the guys getting the call plays. I like that. Get the guys like Antonio Gibson matched up against guys that look like myself. Seems pretty <laughs> simple. Even I can understand it. Good Kev, matchup. That's an, it's a very good matchup. Kev, that's enough preamble. Get to the film. I want to talk about coach. The first thing that we have lined up for you, I believe, this was one from your first season as offensive coordinator. This is when you were at Pittsburgh going against Syracuse. I believe you guys were fighting for for bowl eligibility, I believe. It was, a, it was the last, the last game of the season, and uh, you know, Calvin McGee um, was a co-coordinator, but you know, he called a place throughout the season and uh, – you know, actually going going into that last uh, that last game, you know, uh, Rich Rodriguez had just taken a job at Arizona, and uh, you know, Calvin was going to be going, you know, uh, to to work on, you know, to work back with uh, Coach Rodriguez, and right. uh, Coach Graham came, came to me on Sunday and said, you know, you're calling it this week, and so uh, that uh, that was uh, the last game of the season. We were you know playing for bowl eligibility, and uh, you know it was it was our first year there, and so you know really implementing a lot of things but uh, yeah it was a that was my that was my first uh first time to, to get to call cool. awesome. what, what are those what are those emotions coach i mean that, that that's that's a pinnacle moment in your career you know obviously becoming head coach of florida state in, in memphis previously i mean that's a big deal to be to get that opportunity in that moment to be a play caller what were your emotions like well i mean it was i was excited you know and that's one of the things that i've, I've tried to do throughout my my coaching career uh you know whether i was a ga i tried to prepare as if i was going to be a position coach if i was a you know whenever i was a position coach i tried to prepare as if i was the coordinator because when the moment showed up i wanted to be ready and i I wanted to make sure that i could uh, you know put our guys in the best position and then you know you have a game like this where uh you know it 
you're playing for one more and you're trying to give these guys, the seniors, the guys that had, uh, you know, been a part of the program, a chance to, to go get bowl eligible. And it was, uh, it was there was a lot on it. And, um, you know, I was, I was grateful for the opportunity. Kev, let's take a look at Mike Norvell's first called play in his entire career. I wonder what the result could be. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good start. Coach, what do we got going here on the field? Uh, it's kind of, uh, you know, I've always been a coach that kind of you know, likes to have a sequence of plays or, you know, a, a first script. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And we, the first play that I had scripted was uh, was not this. And uh, you know, <laughs> there was, uh, we actually had a, the opening kickoff, you know, we kicked off to, to Syracuse and, you know, we had a little pooch kick that uh, the ball got to the ground and we recovered it. And, mm-hmm. you know, I knew that. Uh, if we ever had a sudden change in the game, this was the this was the call I wanted to go with. It was a sim- half roll, uh, try to pull the defense, make him think a naked was coming. You know, leak the running back out in the backfield. We took the tight end on a climb, the backside receiver on the post, and uh, you know we knew with the flow of the of the offense or of, of the defense got a chance to get matched up with a uh, with a linebacker. And uh, you, as you can see, I mean they played they played the uh, the pull the boot and yeah, this guy this guy eats it hard. Yeah. Yeah, the running back, uh, they forgot to count for him. And so it turned out to be a good first play call. So is there is something to it? Obviously, when you hear the announcers on the screen saying when there's sudden change in momentum, it's like, oh, it's time for the offense coordinator to go for the jugular. Is there something to that where, you, like you said, you had a script, you change it up based on game? A lot of people want to think some offensive coordinators or it's down distance situation, first script. You do. You're somebody who believes in flexibility dependent on game situation. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go into each game with, uh, you know, I, I like sequencing plays and I like trying to, um, you know, package packaging them, them together to, to try to get information. One, to try to, to be able to see how somebody's going to play you to, you know, certain things that I, it might be to get the ball to a player or to try to see, you know, to see, you know, adjustment or, you know, stuff. maybe it's just plays that we like or we feel very confident in. And, right. You know, there's been times that I've scripted, you know, nine 18 whatever that number is um, and then throughout the first five plays you see something and you're off the script and you mm-hmm. stick with, with something else and um but it, it's it's you know I'm, I'm big on our preparation you know we like to we go into to games with uh, you know pr- pretty good uh, thought of you know what we want to do and how somebody's going to play us but you know just like anything else there's some games you get out there and it's totally different than, than maybe right. what you thought you would see. And you got to be able to adapt and adjust and you don't, you don't get to wait till halftime to do that. It's <laughs> every, every drive. And, um, you know, that was one of those situations that, you know, we got a we had an, a, a momentum grabber there to begin. And, you know, we, we, I felt good about the play call and what we would what we would see. And, you know, it ended up working out. And I think that's something too. Adam's going to introduce the next, yeah. like the next game that we're going to look at. I feel like that's something that through the years, either messing with eye discipline, flows of the defense, getting people going against the grain to where the play's actually going. I think that that's something that is a is a is a hallmark of your offenses. And it's always interesting to see the new ways that you can continue to do that. So, Adam, go ahead introduce that next that next game. Yeah. So it was uh, Arizona, Arizona State. Your time out at Arizona State as offense coordinator with with Todd Graham and. I have a I have a school counseling background, so I immediately go to thought process with a lot of these things. And I thought we were going to do enough X's and O's talk. I really wanted to talk to you about the word response. It's been a big time word for you at Florida State. Is that something that your just life experiences instilled in you? Is that something we talked about the offenses? Is that something you just picked up from all the coaches that you've worked with in your time? Like when did when did you know that was going to be a core principle for your program when you had an opportunity to lead one? I mean, I, th- I think that's just, I mean, that's your identity. You know, anybody can come in and, and talk good when it feels good. But, you know, ultimately, like when things don't necessarily go the way you thought or, you know, even even when things are going to the to the best that they can possibly be, you know, how you how you act in those moments, how you respond in those situations. Are, are you circumstance driven or do you truly have the values and the character of, of what matters to you? And, you know, I think it shows up on a on a football field and, and you know, throughout the course of a game. But it's also, you know, it's, it's about, uh, you know, the identity of, of what you want to be. And, uh, and that's where. Uh, you know, we all have life stories. We all have situations mm-hmm. that we've experienced. And, you know, you know, there's been plenty of times where you, you get knocked down, but you show you can get back up and you show you can continue to get better. And so I try to 
try to help help our players understand that because you know football has been that for me. I played or coached since I was five years old, and I mean this game has meant everything to me. And you know it's just you know if we can if we can help paint the picture for our players through you know how we respond throughout a course of a sixty minute game. I mean it's it's going to be something they're going to look back on. You know maybe when they're thirty or forty or fifty, and you know a situation shows up. Well, I, they've got confidence in what they can do and how they can overcome in the moment. Um, you know, and then on the flip side of it, you know, when they find success, when they're when they're living at the elite level of, right. of things that they desire, they can keep them humility. They can they can stay focused on the little things, the work ethic, you know, and, and don't get caught up in the complac- complacency of what human nature, you know, you want you to want you to be. And so mm-hmm. it's it really just comes down to that identity. It's funny because you were just talking about in the in the Pittsburgh game, the pooch kick. You've got an idea in your mind what you want to do. You have a sudden change, and quickly you have to respond to that situation. So it, I always find it fascinating when, when I listen to you speak, and I try to listen to everything you ever say as a football coach or a retired football coach, high school coach. I just The things you talk about, the response, I just find it so fascinating as a person who studies people and likes to hear that kind of stuff. It's just incredible to me. Kev, if you want to pull it up. Yeah, it's up. So – <laughs> there wasn't any amazing stuff here. It just truly is about the response for me because I find it fascinating. This is a play against Arizona. They're ranked 24th in the country. You guys are battling on the road, and you come out here in the in the third quarter and have a turnover right away off, uh, off, off a jet. Um, yeah, this is actually a PN10 call. It's the first play of the, of the possession. This was an early lesson in life, you know, for me as a play. <laughs> on, on the road, you know, second half, we're down. You know, the, uh, coming off the sideline, went with a speed motion. You know, it was really loud. They were, you know, their fan base. It was a huge rivalry game there. Um, you know, we had a miscommunication. You know, it was just uh, – and that was where, you know, uh, you know I – not, not obviously, not how you uh, envision it, uh, uh, you know, showing up. But I mean, it was one of those, one of those situations that sure. I, I, I definitely learned from. And um, you know, it just, but even with with our team in this game, I mean, it was something that we definitely talked about. And it was our first year. It was our first year there uh, at Arizona State, and uh, you know, we had a very young offense. But it was, it was something that, uh, you know. Uh, it, it's a great second clip after my first call ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like really to have the complete great, picture here. Great sequencing here. <laughs> what well, you what said I found you fascinating. Learned. Oh, go what ahead. I found Adam. fascinating was uh, I, I watched the entire game and I thought early in the game, you guys were shot oriented. You were trying to get play action plays down the field. When you came back after that run and, and off of that play, you really seemed to simplify the run game, went to your zone runs and really f- emphasize that after that, uh, after that fumble in that situation, they go down to kick a field goal. You're down 10 on the road. We talked about response. What's response like for you on the sideline for yourself as a play caller? Um, yeah. Is it okay? I, I need to change. I need to do something different. I learned my lesson on this. Uh, what's that look like for you specifically? No, I mean, it's you, obviously you want to be what your play, what you expect from your players and, you know, to be able to maintain that poise and composure, uh, the confidence in, in what's to come and, and what we're going to be able to do. Um, and that's, that's what, that's what I try to maintain on, on the sideline. And it's, and it's really, you know, I try to do that as an offensive coordinator and it's really carried me over to my time as a, as a head coach. It's, you know, you come and watch practice and you're going to see some, some, you know, extreme you know passion and intensity that we bring but on game day it's about communication all right what did we see what you know you know things that happened why did they occur and how do we adjust from that uh, to to put our players in a position to, to go out there and execute at a high level and and that's what we did here and you know we started we obviously we had some success success with our split zone game or you know some of our mm-hmm. read game yeah. uh, we had a little outside zone that, that started to hit and yeah. we, and really a lot with the tempo i thought started wearing them down a little bit mm-hmm. and, uh, you, we were able to, to hit some big runs you could see the misdirection you know we did we did uh implement some of the uh the motion game to turn it more into a triple option you know game yeah. and uh you know I, I thought that our guys you know executed at a very high level and in their responses you know definitely what what we needed and what we wanted mixing in a little shot here uh, trying to push the ball down the field got a pi we got a pi call um but you know it's just like we we were able to reestablish the game with mm-hmm. the uh, uh you know, with the with the zone game, and then you know, mixing in a couple of the play actions and just playing everything off of off of that. 
Did, did you do? Was the so, motion important to try to manipulate the stacks? I mean, there were yeah, you know, there were that's, that's a you know, it was a, it was an old traditional three three stack, and mm-hmm. so we tried to we, we tried to either gain a hat or you know, there was a couple things that showed up, uh, just how they were how they were shifting the stack, uh, where I felt like we could have we could gain a hat, um, you know, there to the backside as you saw in some of that triple option yep. game. Now having to pitch off safety rather than a than an outside backer. And it seemed like on this drive is when you guys really went to the quarterback with, with the re game. Um, it, it seemed as though you found that. Maybe I don't know if maybe you decided to get to it at this point. We're having success Another earlier thing. and thought you could hold on to it. Oh, like, good right there pitch. Right there. That's a yeah, nice, nice pitch. Well, so, and you see, I mean, we got the you know their defense was was you know they were they were bounced up in the true stack and uh, we were able to gain the hat back with uh, uh, with the read game. You mm-hmm. see that with the with H back coming back to secure He's the box. To- but Coach, it, is he supposed to go upfield, or is he supposed to pin down on this? I mean, we're actually reading we're reading that defensive end, but because the the will linebacker held enough for our our tackle to to really collect him. I mean, you see the the three back he ends up wheeling back on ninety on this, I believe, mm-hmm. and then yeah, the quarterback the quarterback's going to pitch off the safety. Okay, but if it, if they would have truly exchanged it, then right. he would yeah. he, he would have ended up being on the backer quicker. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so on the last play of this, uh, just to finish on the, the response, and, and there was a famous um, moment this past season at Florida State uh, between you and Deuce Span on the sideline. On the, on this last play of this drive, we'll get to it. You've got a guy wide open in the end zone, bounces off his hands. What are you, what are you telling that guy in this moment? Here we go. I mean, bounces right off his helmet. What are you going to say to that guy on the sideline? That's a tough moment in a, in a big time rivalry game do you do you remember this play i mean obviously <laughs> thank you, you said this I, had a, I had a time you got an opportunity to watch it. do you recall this as a coach I, I can think of moments where i just stuff like that happens that you never forget do you recall this moment and then how do you what do you go say to him absolutely i mean you know it's this that's that's what's real life you know mm-hmm. and you know I, you, nobody ever wants to drop a ball nobody ever wants to miss a block i mean it's you know, or a pass or I mean, whatever that whatever that might be but you know you know in the moment it happens and mm-hmm. you, you try to you try to correct you coach all the things that uh, need to be done to perform in that moment of truth but you know there were still 11 minutes in that game and you know we needed you know we needed that young man you know his uh, Rashad Ross was his name and you know, we we knew we would need him at some point throughout the course of the, the those last 11 minutes to to rise up and respond and so you 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 know obviously he's got to keep his hands together got to finish the play watch it, you know all those things but you know it's still also speaking victory into him and you know you know we know that you know anybody experiences a little failure it's it's hard it's embarrassing you know those things that 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 show up but every time i have a bad play call i have the same same feelings uh, but it's you know you got to focus your attention on what you can control and it's that next play and it's going to put yourself in a position to to achieve success and um, you know that's it's part of those uh, you know part of those moments we talk about with the response yeah. All right. As That's Kevin's good. going to introduce that next this next game, and I swear it's UCF. Brendan did not pick it. Kevin actually picked it. So don't blame the UCF grad and Brendan. As as he's as <laughs> Kevin's about to introduce this. Any thoughts on bringing the old Arizona State goatee back, or is that extinct forever? That was pretty so, soft. I mean, I'm rocking a little bit here yeah, today. Little, I see. See all this gray hair? It's very. Oh easy. no, that's knowledge, brother. It's like that's this knowledge. is this, no, this is knowledge. <laughs> this, is, this is sick right here, actually. So yeah. <laughs> It's as much as you're getting right now. I feel you. That's okay. That's just a tease. I like that. All right, Kevin. Now get to the important (laughs) stuff. Yeah. So, uh, Coach, um, I wanted to talk about a couple of UCF games, actually, and just kind of one particular aspect of them. Because when when you were first hired, and I was, you know, having to do video breakdowns of your offense, this the the 2018 uh, AAC championship stood out for for a lot of reasons. Um, So when we when we kind of open this up, this is 2017 against UCF. Uh, we're looking at the Wildcat here, right? So you, you ran the Wildcat uh, four times this game for eight yards, I think. No, three for four yards. So uh, here we go. So the, the Wildcat, you were using it to some success uh, here early on. We played them in a regular season. I believe that was the year, um, and we just dabbled with it. And then we came back in – the championship right. game and you know we jumped into it you know a, a really good amount and it was uh you know, quite successful for us 
So, so I come from like an air raid background. So the, the thought of taking the pass completely away on any given play sounds sounds a little kind of crazy to me. But what <laughs> what what do you see that makes you what that made you go to this play twenty three times this game? I mean, it was clearly successful, two hundred yards. Um, what what kind of things are you looking for that make that allow you to be so multiple, right? So oh, I mean, there's there's uh, there's certain things that are probably not going to disclose totally <laughs> on this, but I please mean, don't. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please uh, don't. Yeah. But I mean, there's there's different things when you when you add the the element of the of the direct snap to the running back. I mean, there is you know you, you get numbers and you you have a chance to balance up numbers. Uh, you know, within within your blocking, um, you know, creating you know certain angles. You know, you do you do lose lose out on the element of the of the mesh, uh, but you know, on the flip side of it, you also can gain, you know, our, our, we actually did one of our running backs did throw a touchdown in this game with a, with a play action. So it wasn't totally, uh, you know, gone, but I mean, it was also, you know, there's just, uh, we had some of our best players were, were our running backs and uh, you know, to be able to, to create that, that advantage and, you know, some of the different things we we're doing in the run schemes. I mean, it was, uh, you know, it was positive and, also giving those guys an opportunity to impact, uh, you know, getting the ball directly to them. Yeah, I mean, to me, this this was probably your most impressive game. I mean, you you guys lost this, but to me, the the idea of going to the Wildcat to such success just, um, yeah, I, I think it's an, an impressive amount of flexibility you've built into this offense, and I think we saw it too early on um, how you've just had to adapt to different quarterbacks over time, and uh, I think that. It's really fascinating to watch your offense kind of have to adapt and change. And that's kind of something that you mentioned quarterbacks and, you know, you look back and you kind of, you saw Taylor Kelly, you know, there in yeah. Arizona state, you know, Taylor Kelly was, um, you know, I think he was a two-star recruit or whatever it was when we had got there that, uh, you know, from, from uh, Boise, Idaho, you know, nobody really knew a whole lot about him, but, you know, uh, just an unbelievable you know, quarterback. And he ended up starting three years for us. You know, he was a runner. He's a dual threat. You know, his, his sophomore year, I think he ran for close to 700 yards, which was our first year together. And, you know, and in his three, three year period of time, I think he broke the school record for all purpose yardage. I mean, just remarkable in what he was able to do and develop as a passer and, and all the things that we were able to accomplish. But then, you know, you go to, you know, his predecessor, Mike Mercovici, threw for four thousand yards and was not a was not a running threat. You see Brady White, what we were able to do at Memphis, you know, Riley Ferguson. Neither of those guys were just tremendous running threats, but you know they were they would force defenses to account for them, and you know they had great arms and could could you know stretch the field in a variety of ways. And then you you see what we've been able to do with with Jordan, and uh, you know obviously utilizing his legs you know as a weapon, but you know just the the one. The, the, the common thread is, you know, with all these quarterbacks, I mean, we, they have great talents in throwing the football, got a variety of things that they can do uh, in, in where they put the ball. And we try to, we try to keep them, you know, changing up launch points, changing up, uh, you know, some of the things schematically that, uh, that allows them to, to show that talent. And, uh, but whether it's a runner and, and I, and I do try to keep, you know, I don't want to recruit the exact same quarterback every single year. You know, I want, I want, I want to have versatility in the guys that we recruit because you don't know exactly what your team's going to be. And you know, if you have injuries at, at one position and, and maybe you get overloaded at, at receiver or, or uh, um, you know, running back or, or I mean, whatever that might be. And, uh, and, you know, if you have a quarterback that can just do one thing or is it just, you know, one right. straight. I mean, you want to be able to have versatility of what's best for your offense. And, you know, like I said, the players make the offense. Does that make that, it a little bit challenging year to year? Like, say you you have someone who is more of a running threat who potentially goes down, or more of a passing threat who goes down, having to adapt on the fly, um, having different skill sets in the quarterback room. No, I mean I think that you know, like I said, this offense is we have a lot of versatility in this offense, and how we you know, I remember last year you know. I was asked a question, you know, throughout the course of the year, you know, you know early in the season, you know, uh, why are we not running Jordan? Why does Jordan yeah. not run as much? And <sighs> yep. you know, cause a lot of teams know that he can run. And so they are counting for him, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you know, and so as the season went on, there were some more creative opportunities that, that presented themselves and teams were, were like, focusing more on our running backs and you know, gave him some opportunities mm -hmm. to, to get into space and you saw, you know, what was able to happen there. And so it's like, um, you know, if we don't, 
if, so, if, we're, if we don't want to run the quarterback, we don't have to run the quarterback. If we if we have you know, strength at receiver or tight end or running back um, or matchups up front, I mean, there's games that we rely heavily on schemes that we think might help us in a run game mm-hmm. um, against a certain either personnel or looks or or whatever that is. And so you know we like we take a lot of pride in the in the versatility that we can show and what we can present not only within the course of a season but you know with also within the course of a game. How is that? Evol- you're talking about the run game, your evolution in the run game. I was listening to Coach Atkins. Uh, he did the cool clinic uh, recently. He talked about counter. How's that evolved for you? When you guys were at Arizona State, and you, like you said, I mean, you had some of that rich rod background with the with the zone run game. How is that evolution from being big time zone? I mean, you guys were heavy outside zone, inside zone, and now, I mean, it's almost like I don't know, 65, 75 percent counter. And I mean, Coach Atkins was big. Like that is our that's our staple. That's our play. Like that's our bread and butter. That's what we want to put our hat on. How's, how's that evolution occurred for you? Well, I mean, you, you sit there and you look, you know, the zone read is something that's, you know, it's been around forever, but it really is over the last few years has uh, really kind of taken off to a new height. And when you look at that Arizona state film, uh, you know, Chris Thompson was our offensive line coach at Arizona state. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, and it's funny. Cause like we go back and, you know, and there'll be times that he's, you know, this is what, you know, the things that we did and, you know, things are, that were really productive for us. We used to run a lot more power than we did counter. And, um, you know, and then, you know, as you see defenses evolve, you see, you know, different ways of trying to attack what, what people do. And we're just, we're trying to, uh, you know, it's all about the matchup. It's all about, you know, trying to create space for our running backs, create space for our quarterbacks, give our line, you know, good angles, um, and there's there's some games even this last year where you know the counter was not as much for us you know as yeah. we were trying to attack yeah. in a different area so um you know it and it's one of the selling points to to recruits when they come in so, so you got a chance to do it all i mean you're going to get yeah. a chance to run a variety whether it's whether it's g whether it's inside outside zone whether it's you know counter you know the different you know man and and man zone and gap scheme mm-hmm. that we run you know offensively I and mean, that's a fun that's a fun offense to to play old line in and yeah. you know it's a you know, it's it's also the balance of are you are you going to be you know just good at all or are you going to become great at a few yeah. you know we just you know it's it's the it's the way that we try to rep it it's the trade the way that we try to teach it and uh, you know our guys they they've embraced they've embraced that process and uh, i think it's what allows us to to continue to take steps. So like on, on that same topic, as the, as college football has become more and more pass heavy, you know, all the analytics want to talk about, you know, efficiency of, of passing plays versus running plays. You can look at the yards per attempt versus yards per carry, whatever. You've kind of stayed steadfast in this idea of, I want to run to set up the pass where, where I think increasingly coaches are saying, I, I want to start to throw the ball to set up the run. What what has kind of kept you on that train? Why is why is the running game so attractive to you as as a as an offensive minded coach? And it's you know I think there's a there's a mentality that goes with it too. Um, yeah. But you know it's it, there's always elements uh, that can show up in in any game. Uh, mm-hmm. You know it's it's fun to it's fun to want to throw the ball you know, all the time, <laughs> yeah. and then you play you play in the in the. I remember, I remember the first game that, or one of the first games of the season at Memphis one year. We had uh, uh, basically a hurricane that had come through. I can't remember which hurricane it was, but we literally played in you know, sixty plus mile power winds. There were nobody there. I mean, it was just you couldn't even, you couldn't even barely even get in a shotgun because the snap was getting you know so far. But right. And we still tried to throw the ball some. It was, I can't say it was, it was uh, but it's, it's still, you know, there's things that can, I never want to be standing on the sideline to know that something's been absolutely taken away and you don't have, you know, quality, quality answers. And it's run, run, run pass. Now there are, like I said, there's been games that we've, we've had to throw for four or 500 yards and we've been able to do that. Uh, but in the same season, be able to run for 400 yards in a game. And that's where, when you have that, you know, you take, uh, you know, I know it gets probably not, it's not the coolest thing to hear, but you want to take what the defense gives you. That's a reality. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you know, your players, you know what, uh, you know, you, you want to put them in the best position. And, and that's what, you know, when I, when I watch this team, you know, one of the things I'm, I'm so excited about is like, you see, I mean, every, every skill position wants a ball, every player, 
They all want the ball. They want as many times as they can get it. Yeah. When, you, when you see the understanding of, I mean, if, if I will do, if I'll do the dirty work without the ball in my hand, whether it's a running back that's carrying out a fake, whether it's, you know, back sprinting off the mesh, whether it's a, you know, receiver blocking downfield or whatever that might be. I mean, they know it's just going to give them more space because I, what I do care about, I care about yards per attempt, about yards per carry. Like that's one something that I want to see. I want to be one of the best in the country of, of, of yards per carry for our for our running backs because you know it's uh, you know when, when you're creating space and you got talented guys, I mean you're doing what you say you want to do. I, I want to see our, our our yards per completion to be at a very high rate. You know our the efficiency of of uh, you know, how we're throwing the ball because you're creating one on one matchups. You're getting guys in a position to go showcase you know what they do. And if you ask any skill position player, what do they want? They want to be in a one on one. Right. And then it, all the technique, all the fundamentals, everything you you work throughout the course of, uh, uh, you know, the off season and, and all the things you do in, in practice and in camp. That's what puts you in the best position to have success on the one on one. So um, you know, those are things that you offensively that are just I, I think are that's why I've always wanted to maintain that balance. And, uh, you know, you see you've seen different, you know, different scheme elements that have, that have shown up, you know, defensively. Cause you know, everybody's going, it's, it's a great chess match. It's going to, yeah, right. you know, it's, it's the ebb and flow of all things that you know, things that were done, you know, 30 years ago, will come back at some point. And then there's things that are, that are new that you, know, you got to adapt and adjust to. And so, um, you know, I think there's been some things that, you know, with it, with it, with, uh, against the air raid or against the triple option or against, you know, you know, whatever spectrum you want to live on. But when you could do a little bit of, of both, I mean, it's makes the world a whole lot better. Run the dang ball, coach. Run the dang ball. <laughs> oh, here we go. Everybody's going to get their stuff in. Well, you were talking about gray hairs earlier, and it is that flexibility, versatility that oh, you got a couple grays, coach. You've been giving defensive coordinators grays for years, so I don't think any of those guys feel sorry for you, um, Kevin. Listen, this is the game that I pick. So you decide to maybe come on here again. I'm going to pick an AAC championship game that Memphis won as opposed to the ones that you guys lost, Kevin. Let's <laughs> got to talk about the Sometimes you learn lunch. more from losses than wins. Oh, yeah, okay. that's what you say until he doesn't come on our show again. Listen, 20, <laughs> the 2019 AAC game, extremely unique situation. Not only are two of the best teams in the country from the AAC, your Memphis Tigers and the Cincinnati Bearcats, that team, by the way, people don't remember, Desmond Ritter, uh, Josiah Daguerre, he was a third-round draft pick for the Green Bay Packers at tight end. Sauce Gardner, I think you guys know him. Luke Fickle had five all-ACC first-team guys on his defense that you had to go up against. Not once, but twice, back-to-back. What is, before we get to the film, what is the mindset as a coach, a play caller, a game planner such as yourself? You beat them by 10 points, 34-24 game one. You end up beating them game two. Is it going into game two, is it a don't, like it's not broke, don't fix it mentality? Or do you start like looking ahead to thinking of possible adjustments that they might make because they lost the first game? Does your aggression change? What happens in a situation like that from a head coach's standpoint? Well, I mean, the, the the real mind trick was going in in the first the first game because you know you got we needed to win you know we had uh, uh, you know we had one Navy had only lost one game that year so we had to right. win to be able to get into the end of the championship game Cincinnati had already won and secured because they were on the other division and so we had to win the first game to to be able to host right. the championship and or to play and host the championship so. It, we knew we needed everything we had. And, but with that, we also knew that if we won it, we would play them again. And that's where to be able to, to game plan for the first game, to make sure we had enough. Uh, there were a few things that we put in that game plan that I didn't really know exactly how they would align. Um, but we kind of took a chance on it. And sure. even through that game, I learned some lessons that we could apply in the second game. And it was, it actually worked out pretty, you know, you know, pretty good. And just being a, a big picture, you know, you know, educational uh, experience, but it was, you know, it was also essential that we, we won the game and our guys played at a really high level as a great defense. I mean, you watch them throughout the course of the season. Uh, there weren't a whole lot of people that, you know, scored 20 points on them, you know, really in, in, no. in that's in that year. So it was a, it was a great defense, but it was also, it was a, it was a great challenge. You know, Marcus Freeman, who's the, yeah. uh, the head coach, mm-hmm. defensive coordinator. So it was a, I mean, you talk about a great, great chess match. It was a, well, it was a lot of, 
A lot yeah. of fun. Not a whole lot of sleep those two weeks. Though. <laughs> I wouldn't imagine so, but two dubs for our guy right here. Um, let's talk about it. Kev, if you could pull up the film, I thought it was interesting. First play of the game, onside kick. You're a special teams guy. What do we got on the screen here, Coach? You know, we wanted to wanted to be aggressive uh, to, to you know, try to be able to create a possession. Uh, you know, it was something that, uh, you know, when you're playing – a quality team like this, it, it was a risk reward. You know, mm-hmm. I put a lot of confidence in our defense. You know, uh, Coach Fuller, had, you know, we developed one of the better defenses in the country. And uh, uh, even even if it didn't work out, you know, which you know, ultimately there was a was a penalty on on the play, so it didn't work out for us. But it felt like we'd be able to uh, to to make a stop and uh, be ready to be ready to to roll with that. So, um, but we you know, it's an aggressive mindset, and uh, you know, guys, uh, you know, they were ready. And I mean, our offense, defense, special teams, everybody's on the same page. I didn't see a flag personally, but that's just me. Okay, next play. We got a chunk play. We talked about explosives in the run game before Kevin runs the clip formationally. What do we have here? All right, so it just a, it's a it's a tight end split back. You know, tight end uh, uh, to the nub side. You know, basically, uh, you know, it's one of the formations we uh, I really like because you know, utilizing our backs, they're receiving threats, uh, but they also do the dirty work as blockers. Um, you, you get your, you know, obviously you guys know, I mean, we like using tight ends and, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the defensive, uh, I guess alignment, you got a three safety look and, you know, for what we're trying to do and do, to keep a defense off, off, uh, you know, off balance. I mean, they're trying to do the same thing with who's dropping into the box, where are they going? Um, but okay. you know, it's a, it's a lot of, uh, it's like I said, one of the great you know, chess matches to see who who's key and who, where, where are their eyes at and how can we try to gain a, the advantage with our hat yeah freeman was an early adopter of the kind of oaky looks and well you got to play iowa state back in the day in that bowl game no it was uh yeah that was a uh, that was one of those games where uh yeah, that iowa state game was a great you know kind of experience you talk about defenses that have, have kind of evolved and mm-hmm. you know iowa state was a was a big part of that and yeah, yeah this was actually one of the plays that we had a uh we had a run check that was uh that was built in um that if we got a certain look where we felt like we could gain where we could get gain an advantage and you know here we have the lead blocker with the front side back you know on the on on being able to search out basically that front side um you know when you're running away from the two and so you're running away from the two guys on the back side you have still have the quarterback read element and you know you have a great player that you know makes a guy miss and he is able to continue to run so 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 on your runs do you do you guys always have a backside read element and you just make it active or is it something that um is, is play specific always is a long time but i mean we we like <laughs> we like to uh we like to make sure that uh you know if teams are not going to account for our quarterback which you know brady white wasn't gonna you know break any <laughs> records as a runner but i mean he was if if you weren't going to account for him then he would he would definitely uh, you know you make you pay enough and uh, that's where you know when you have uh I always try to uh, you, you say it's a game of one on ones, but if they go one on none, you know we got to make them. We got to mm-hmm. make them hurt. And, and Brady's got some tough runs here in this clip, to where I think he redeems himself as that tough kind of situational runner. Now, coaches, we get to these next series of clips. I believe the next two, three, four. Not exactly sure. Terrible memory. They're all from the first drive of the third quarter. Kevin, before you run this play, too late. Already going. Let's pause it. <laughs> What was your mindset coming into the second half? You said that you like to script drives. You like to have a sequence of events. Did you sequence this first drive of the third quarter, or are we going with the moment here? Yeah, you know, we'll we'll try to we'll try to get those. You know, going into each second half. You know, when you get in the half, when you get in the halftime, um, you know, I like to have a thought process coming mm-hmm. out. It's not always a a sequence. You know, there's times that there might have been a set of plays that that we didn't get into. Um, you know, if I remember correctly, I mean, this was this was one of the, you see getting back to a kind of a three back set. Then where you got your two split backs, um, and then you add the tight end element to where you know you can you can really try to work to create leverage and angles and, and adding hats to the defensive scheme. So, um, you know, this was something that we we wanted to get a little bit more into, and uh, you know, force them to have to make adjustments on the sideline, and it also. You know, trying to get a sense of how they're, you know, out of this same set, we had a whole mo- motion package uh, that we that we used to just once again try to create angles and worked out pretty good for us. Okay, perfect. But you can see what you know we had with a fold scheme there with the offensive linemen, you know, just trying to create create leverage on with the down block, you know, the kick, and then you know, obviously, uh, uh, you got two two lead 
blockers that are that are mm-hmm. working working themselves through. <clears throat> Man, the big boy. Big boy was looking for somebody to hit going through that, going through are that you, hole right there. I like that. Are you having the back go wide to try to help influence that end or no? I mean, it, you know, he he knows where he's got a he does have a fast force, you know, player. You can see the safety kind of being mm-hmm. down. So um trying to be able to to create horizontal spacing there too. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right, Kev. I think we can hit the next one. I believe it's one of the next drives in the sequence. This one, what happens, what happens when you have a play that doesn't, that doesn't work out such as this one, was this due to an execution miss or was this, did they make adjustments during the middle of the series? I um, mean, you can say hey, this was actually one of those where it was you know, their defensive end basically shading himself about six inches just wider than what, uh, uh, you know, they kind of jumped about in a five technique and uh-huh. it, it was, we weren't able to create as much as what we wanted, uh, what we were hope, hopeful to get. And, uh, you know, so it really made it a little bit, a little bit cloudier than what we wanted. And it was a great defensive lineman. If, if we were able to, to, to hold the point there, we're a little wide with our, with our backs track too, but you, you could see where the seam was going to, mm-hmm. was going to potentially yeah. be, but, uh, you know, guy makes a great play and, you know, that's where you always tell our, I tell our, uh, our, you know, our players that, you know, they're on scholarship too. And there's times that uh, you're going to play those really good players. And, uh, you know, this the defensive end made a great play and we could be a little bit tighter, um, you know, on the, on the, uh, on the track, but. You know, so, so in a play like this coach, when, when you see them make this little adjustment and allows their defensive end to, to win at what level do you keep tweaking things versus get concerned that you're, you're trying to get too cute with it and, well, there was, there was, I mean, there were times like, as, as he squeezed, as he continues to squeeze to the tackle. I mean, we were trying to create more space with you. I mean, you can see where the tackle's trying to right. rip him out there. I mean, there were some things that we even tried to have some, some, you know, uh, we tried to disguise it with a little pass set there, you know, earlier, but then when you get beat underneath, it's like, Oh, don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's, that's the things like it within the course of the game that you think, you think somebody's going to react a certain way, but maybe they don't. And, uh, you know, you just got to adapt and adjust throughout it. Okay, perfect. And you guys definitely did. Let's get to this next play. This is a fun formation. What's going on here? Uh, we started off with a, with a squeezed look, um, you know, had a pre-snap tip of, uh, of what could potentially come. And, you know, I've, we, we carry a couple checks in each game and, uh, you know, we saw that there was going to be a one-on-one look and tried to, Try to get uh, a little bit more spacing. So I just, uh, actually, in all reality, I just yelled at the receiver on the side on the sideline. Come so, over <laughs> here, one of these. Yeah, widen out. <laughs> as a re- as a receiver yourself, you gotta love. I think this is Demonte Coxie, right? You gotta love him fighting through, yeah. fighting through the coverage here. What a great play! Yeah, no, he did. He did a great is this job. Sauce? Yeah, he was uh, against a really good player too. So yeah, yeah, sauce. V- very good. <laughs> uh. That's nice. So you fight through this. Get down here. Another Kevin pause again, just with that kind of that same. You said that three back look. Um, just kind of keep continuing the series going as you've had some nice success with this look, or any other wrinkles on this play. No, I mean just I mean if you you can kind of look at the picture and see where we're gaining you're gaining the advantage. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, trying to keep two two guys to the field. You know, outside the outside the core of the box where you're looking at the backer and the safety and. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're able to add a hat, you know, working back week. So, yeah, they were doing a good job. You, know, you talk about the lessons from the first week. You can see how the backers are trying to run through the the, the A gap. And we were able to change our snap count just a little bit, uh, forcing him to hold where he's just not, you know, teeing off on our on our center because, you know, they're trying to create penetration. So being able to change cadences, you know, being able to do things like that, that's a, you know, that's an adjustment that nobody's going to see. It's not mm-hmm. something that's in a – that's not, not something that's in a, you know, ever going to be really talked about, but I think it's one of the more key things that happened in the course of that game is that our guys were able to, you know, still execute at a high level and, you know, have variation in, in cadence. Did All you right. take your splits up on this on the O-line? They look, they look foot to foot almost. Well, it was, you know, and that, some of that was just from the things we, we talked about earlier, you know, with trying mm-hmm. to, you know, with the tackle. Yeah. It was, yeah. so there was a lot of, <laughs> a lot of games being played. A lot, a lot of games, and uh, you know, trying not to let, try to be able to get 
you know, to keep from the run throughs happening and to be able to have enough where we were able to knock them off track. When you're making those decisions, how much do you worry about or, or think about, you know, the defensive coaches and their, their staff up in the box? How much do you worry about them seeing that, attacking that? I mean, when, you, when you're making those kind of choices to, to tighten your splits down or, or to be able to influence guys, like, do you think about, oh, well, they might see it. Maybe we shouldn't do this. What's that thought process for you guys? Well, you're still going to have, I mean, it, even in those decisions, you know, if we're going to usually not going to do that just for one thing. And, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, so as long as you still can have, you know, multiplicity of things that you're doing out of it, you know, you just got to know what you're, you know, everything's going to have an effect. So, mm-hmm. you know, when it, when you have, when you decide to tighten your splits, just like when you, you know, when you, or if you decide to widen them, I mean, there's going to be, you're giving something up or you make something more challenging, but you've got to be able to still, operate out of it because if you're just one track out of everything you do then right. it's not gonna work out well for you yeah. kevin want to do something obviously this is third and goal brady he shows off the wheels you guys get in the next play is the go-ahead touchdown memphis wins aac champions mike norvell heads to tallahassee kevin i want to go to the secret film because i've got a wide receiver prospect that i really want coach norvell <laughs> to take a look at now the film's a little bit old but i want to see what you see in this guy's game that can really like maybe translate if this is a receiver that you'd recruit, if you could, I believe the films from early he looks, 2000s. He looks a little slow. I'm going to be honest. He looks a little oh, slow. Oh, that's, I didn't, I thought he looked, I thought he looked shifty, but we'll see. <laughs> shifty. I thought he looked shifty. He has some good blocking <laughs> prowess. I think Kevin, if you could pull up that film. Oh, it happens to be central Arkansas. Interesting. What do we got here? What do we see here? Coach it's a zone coverage beater. Mm. All day, true every day, evolution right? of the wheel route from Mike Norvell, right? Yeah, here. the wheel. <laughs> we see it all come together. Well, you, guys, you guys can't you guys. tell. This, this is Michael. <laughs> this is Michael Norvell, Central Arkansas, number six ranked, I think, in D two at the end of two thousand five. A banner year for the Central Arkansas Bears. Let's keep going. Look at those moves. Under we have to give full credit to Brendan. Of course, you know it wouldn't be a. It wouldn't be a 24-7. Uh, oh, body oh my goodness. Paul Johnson is smiling back. somewhere. What <laughs> what kind of block is this big guy? That's back before the cut. Or you, 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 <laughs> cut you find, find every advantage you can get, especially when you're about 170 pounds. <laughs> oh, Ric Flair would be proud. That is a chopper of all choppers. All right, keep going. We got like two minutes, guys. That's fine. Oh, uh, yeah, we can end it anytime he want. Now oh, no, no, maybe just a couple <laughs> more. Just a couple more. Last one. Oh, 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 tough catch over the middle. What was your favorite route to run as a receiver, Coach? Uh, I mean, I was always like, I like the post variations. So they just post curl, post dig, post corner. I mean, I, I just, I love the technical part of that. So, you know, we, we ran, that was one of the things, and we do it here where you have a lot of choice routes and trying to give guys opportunities to, you know, play off a of leverage, you know, you know, see what see what coverage you're getting or, or a type of leverage and, you know, allow the skilled players to, you know, put themselves in the best position. And that's where, you know, there's, we have a few locked routes, but most of the time we try to try to help guys, you know, in the evolution. And I think if you look at our offense, you know, just over the years, um, you know, we want to be playing our best ball as the season progresses. And, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of offenses that, um, you know, as, as there's more film that gets out there that, you know, they're maybe, maybe I would say easier to defend, but, you know, there's things that show up. I mean, we want, we want to be one that as our guys get more reps in it, that they play better. And I think you see that at the quarterback position through, you know, just years of playing, um, you know, how guys grow, you see that in, in, you know, throughout the course of the season, you know, as we get to the back part of it, you know, we take pride in playing our best football. And that's something that you know, there's times that you know, early in the year, you know, you, you go through some, some moments where it might not look as good as, as what you hope, but you got to, I mean, you, you've got to continue to grow through it. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's one of the fun things about being a part of uh, what we do. Well, this is one of the funnest things I've ever been a part of. Coach, thank you so much for your time. We hope it's not the last. I'm going to pick more games where you were the winning coach. I loved it. Everybody watched, loved it. There is some former Gulf South Conference DB icing his knees right now that might not have liked to see that footage. I loved it. Coach, anything you want to say to Seminole Nation before you head out and do the 9 million other things on your schedule? No, just appreciate appreciate all the support. Obviously, we're all excited about the season that's ahead. And uh, 
and look forward to seeing everybody uh, you know, as, as we kick off this next year and, um, and have a great summer and go Knowles. Go Knowles, baby. Go Thank Knowles. you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Coach.